This week on Peach That Makes, I'm going to show you how to take this grandfather clock and turn it into a cigar humidor. So, if you want to find out how, stick around. What is up everybody? Welcome to Peach Shop Makes. I'm your host Pete. Thanks for joining me here today. Uh, if this is your first time here, I can go ahead and invite you to hit that like button, smash that subscribe, and don't forget to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button to uh, get notified anytime I post any future uh, videos. So, uh, my buddy Ron over at 12 Volt Villains reached out to me. He asked if I could essentially turn this grandfather clock into a humidor for him. He's a huge cigar collector, cigar aficionado, if you will, and recently came into the possession of his grandfather's grandfather clock. Um, I don't know if that makes it uh, his great-grandfather clock. I don't really know how clocks and grandsons work. <laughs> but uh, anyways, he's already taken the liberty to strip all the hardware and counterweights and everything out of it. Um, but I'm going to essentially just do a series of shelves on the inside. We're going to line it with some Spanish cedar, uh, just do a skeleton frame with a series of shelf pinholes, and then um, do a little basin at the bottom where we're going to store the humidifier. And then each little shelf tray is going to house a uh, hygrometer to gauge the temperature and the humidity. And then um, there's just going to be a couple other little custom details along the way. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and start stripping off the back panel just to give me some better access to the inside and then uh, we can start taking some measurements and uh, making some cuts and getting everything all lined out. So if you guys are interested in seeing how this thing all comes together, stick around. In order to get this back off, there's glue all the way around the perimeter. I got to heat it up and then slowly pry it off. Now I can just simply line this with the uh, cedar and then do my skeleton frame with a little bit easier access instead of having to try to fight around that door. All right, let's go cut some more wood. just quickly threw together these little panels here for the top and bottom. All I did was just put together three slats and then tape up the seams. That'll allow me to fold it over and add some glue. So to give us a fighting chance against any delamination, I'm choosing to use Type Bond 3. Uh, it's the only Type Bond glue that is waterproof. Uh, type Bond 2 is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. This will just give us a fighting chance against uh, the humidity. Okay, once those dry, we'll trim them up. So those came out pretty good. Moment of truth, see if it fits. Boom shakalaka. Let's see what it looks like from the other side. Oh, that is like a glove, ladies and gentlemen. Look at how tight that fits in there. There's no gaps back here. That looks really good. Now I'm just going to cut the corner posts on each of the four corners and then um, trim those panels that I just took the tape off of down to size and get those fit into place and glued in. Black 
check the fit. Beautiful. What happened, buddy? Where's your bone? Did you eat it already? You gonna help me? You gonna help me work? You wanna use the bandsaw again? You can use the bandsaw. You're pretty good at it. Oh, I think that's a yes. All right, now we can go ahead and cut the wood for the corner posts. Because there's a little magnetic stop right there on the inside of the clock for the door to catch, I have to cut a little notch out of these posts. Perfect. So what's next? I'm gonna start drilling the shelf pin holes and then we'll get the corner pieces installed. So in the intro, I mentioned doing some custom details to this clock. Uh, his grandfather was in the military, and at his funeral, they did the traditional 21-gun salute. And uh, this was the, uh, one of the original shell casings um, that was fired during the ceremony. And he asked me if I could somehow incorporate this into the clock. Um, we sort of came up with the idea to use it as a door pole. So here's the original door pole, just a standard brass traditional decorative uh, door pull on a clock. I'm sure you've all seen this before, pretty familiar. The only issue I have is since the shell casing is empty, that's not gonna leave much for the screw to be able to bite into. This is pretty thin walled brass and um, that's not gonna be a very secure attachment. So what I went ahead and did, I basically inserted a dowel down here and just filled it in with some uh, JB weld and then drilled a little hole in the back, which makes a nice tight and secure fit for the screw and uh, that'll be a nice secure pull. Another cool little detail I came up with was to just sharpen the tip here at the end and that way uh, as it's facing down and he takes a cigar out of the cabinet he can simply just punch a hole out in the bottom uh, to be able to take drags off of the cigar. So that's just another kind of cool little detail I came up with and uh, it'll serve a dual purpose. I'm about ready to get started on the pull out trays and so I busted out the table saw sled and just got my box joint jig or finger joint uh, jig set up. And because the front portion of the tray is gonna be thicker than the other three sides, because this is what's gonna house the hygrometer, uh, I basically have to cut the uh, fingers two different lengths. You see here in this one has to be long enough to obviously tie in together with that. And then these fingers back here will match up to those. So I just did a little test cut, everything works good. So now we can go ahead and finish cutting the rest of them. So the 
CNC's in the garage now, working its little tail off, finishing the rest of these drawer bottoms. Simple little design just to allow humidity and airflow around the cigars. And this was just made out of some sheets of Spanish cedar. Okay, so this is essentially what the trays are going to look like, and now we can just go ahead and finish gluing them up, and uh, after that, we're pretty much on the home stretch. So, let's go ahead and carry on. Hold up! So, I ran into a minor snag, um, and I'm actually glad that I didn't uh, glue in the back posts, because uh, after putting the tray in, I guess for whatever reason, I don't know if I, I just didn't take it into consideration, or just didn't think about it, but obviously the thickness of the front and back of these trays, um, you know, takes up room. This is a very shallow cavity in, in this clock with the inset and uh, putting those slabs on the back of the back panel doesn't leave me any room really. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna leave off the back rails and then I'll have to re-drill uh, shelf pin holes either along the sides or in the back of the panel. And, um, and then I think what I'm gonna have to do is pillow the fronts of these after I get the hygrometers put in uh, I'm just going to have to kind of sand these down to uh, remove some material. That way I can push these as far forward as possible. Either that or I'm going to have to plane down the back panel as much as possible because I really don't have any room right here for that as is. We also kind of want these to be tipped up so when you're looking at it in the front, they're kind of just on display instead of just sitting flat. So in order for that to happen, you just have to remove a little bit of material, but that's okay. Uh, just a small little hiccup and just glad that I caught it now before I actually went ahead and glued in those panels. So here's the little digital hygrometers that I mentioned in the beginning uh, that he wants inset into the front of these trays. I'm basically gonna go ahead and put this on my CNC and just have it route out a little pocket Simply going to cut the groove for the drawer bottoms.
So next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pillow the fronts of these drawer boxes. They're all complete. They're all dried. Uh, did a light sanding on them. Uh, pillowing is just the uh, act of slightly relieving the shelf front of some material and just rounding over sort of and because I don't want to relieve any material here where the hygrometer is going to be I'm going to put the center of my bow right on the edge of this cavity here so just bend it back slightly and we do the same on the other side so you can maybe see just the slightest amount of material that we are going to remove. And I'll just simply remove this over on the disc sander. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do for this back panel here, I'm gonna make this like a secret compartment. Basically, I'm just gonna put the hands back on because the front, you know, still just has the clock face. And then I'm just gonna put in like a regular clock mechanism, like it takes a double A battery, you know? And then um, I'm gonna try to put some, uh, like a piece of wood on the back of here just to kind of rigidify it a little bit. And then um, maybe put some sort of hinge perhaps, and then uh, make this so you can basically open this up and there'll just be like a little shelf in here maybe. in the bag? Well, I'm glad you asked. These are all the RGB LEDs. This will just add some ambiance and uh, some custom lighting details to the inside of the case. Oh, it works. It's working. Sweet. Hi, Maddie. I think you're in the shop. Thank you.
you what? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Dude. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I can't believe you polished that all up. It looks brand new. Yeah. Wow, it's man. It's so cool. That's the bullet, too. It's all polished up. Yeah. Wow. Man, this is crazy, Pete. You did an awesome job. That oh, smells good too. It smells brand new. It doesn't smell like all the cigar smoke. And you put the lights in there. Is it lit up too? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. Wow. Oh, I can see now. I like what you did with the bottom tray like that too. Yeah, that's to hide the, the yeah exactly yeah humidifier and stuff. Looks like it's holding the humidity well too. It's showing sixty nine percent already in there. That's a good uh, sign. It's sealed well. Even the face looks good. Like it's been all polished up on the clock face. Yeah, that's so awesome. I can't believe that the wood looks this good too. I mean, it, man, this is crazy. I'm so excited. Oh. I showed my wife the uh, video of it and she said that she thinks it looks so nice she'll let me keep it in the living room. I was like, dang. Well, where else were you going to put it? In my office. Oh, uh, okay. That's what she was like, wow, that looks really good. Man, that's awesome. Glad you like it. Sweet. Well, that's going to wrap this one up, you guys. If you made it to the end, congratulations. I do appreciate it. I know this was a little bit longer of a video. Uh, this was probably one of the more detailed and custom projects I've done in a while, but uh, I'd like to thank Ron again for uh, giving me the opportunity to do this for him. And as you maybe saw, uh, obviously he was pretty stoked on it, and I'm super happy with the way it turned out. Um, you know, I just never retrofitted a clock before, so that was pretty cool. But um, other than that, uh, I do appreciate you guys sticking around, checking it out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, maybe subscribe, share it with some friends. Uh, you can catch me over on Instagram at Peach Shop Makes. But other than that, uh, again, thanks for sticking around. I do appreciate it. And as always, I will catch you on the next one. <laughs>